Okay, so let's have a look at 2B. So we've got if such that the restricted domain is the only between 1 and 5 that maps on the real number prime for f of x equals 3 minus x. So once again, this is just a straight line. However, this part plays a major role. So let's look at our domain and range. So our domain, we've got it there, is between 1 and 5. So what's our range going to be? That's what we have to think about. How do we figure that out? So we should be able to, I'm just going to change my colours over here. So let's jump across over here for a moment. So if I want to find out what the value of y is when x equals 1, I just sub that in. So let's say sub x equals 1 in. So if I've got that, that's y equals 3 minus x equals 3 minus 1 equals 2. And then I'm going to sub x equals 5 in. So I get y equals 3 minus 5. And so that's negative 2. So I know my range is going to be negative 2, 2, 2. Okay, so now I've got my domain and range sorted. So when you've got this restricted domain, if you sub these values in, then it gives me what the value of the y function is. So when x equals 1, I know y equals negative 2. When x equals 5, I know uh, the function or the y value will equal 2. So I've mentioned y, but it's it's really f of x, so don't put stress over that. It's just this is just your side working out. If that makes sense, it's not uh, just on the side. So now we've got that. So our next thing we have to do is really say let y equal f of x. So that gives us y equals three minus x. So for my inverse, what do I do? I swap x and y around. So I end up going x equals three minus y. So now I simply fix these up and so now I've got this so it's a positive 3 so I've got to take 3 from both sides so I end up with x minus 3 equal minus y. That's like a minus 1 there so I divide by minus 1 divide by minus 1 so I get minus x plus 3 equals y. Or I can write that as y equals 3 minus x, which is just a bit neater. So now my inverse function, write it back as function form, f to the negative, negative 1, I'll just make that a bit neater. Oops. f to the negative 1 of x is going to be 3 minus x. So if you note, it's exactly the same as what we got at the, at the top. So our inverse function just happens to be uh, exactly the same as our uh, original function. However, we've got a change of domain and range. So that's where it makes a difference. So our domain and our range. Okay, so if I look at our domain for the original function, that's going to be our range over here. So our range is going to be 1. Five, and our domain. Oops, our domain is going to be this one. So it's going to be minus two, two. So there we go. So we've now got our inverse function, which just happens to be the same as our original function. We've got our domain and ranges that I've swapped around. So that's where the main difference is in this one. So there you go. Hopefully that will help.